Craig Berg. I'm the former reptile and aquarium curator at Milwaukee County Zoo in Wisconsin, United States. The song that we hear in the background is a frog known as tree frog and actually has about a dozen different names. I tend to refer to it as Johnson's frog, but a, another common name for it is Johnson's coqui because the sound that we're hearing is just very, very similar to the true coqui. It has a two note sound. So, coqui, and each one of those notes means something different. One of the notes is an advertisement to males that there's a male frog here, stay away. The other is a come hither for a female frog. Right now we're hearing the frogs because it's very, very damp. And frogs being amphibians, they have a skin that easily loses water to the atmosphere. So they don't tolerate being out in the sun. They don't tolerate dry conditions. Today's is a perfect example of the type of weather they like. Rain on and off keeps the vegetation moist, high humidity. And this is also the time when female frogs will be out looking for a mate and so the frogs that we're hearing singing are males and are calling to the female. Male of the species will often actually take care of the eggs and because of that it allows the Johnstone's frog to have a very very high reproductive rate because the female can lay eggs, the male will protect the eggs, the female will go off, feed and within 20 days be able to lay some more eggs. Johnstone's frogs are from a group of frogs that are all direct developers, which means that they lay eggs and they pass through the tadpole stage and emerge as very tiny copies of the miniature adults. About the size of an ant, they're extremely small. On Saba, there's only one species of frog, although there's always the possibility that the Cuban tree frog, which is an invasive species and is found on St. Martin, could possibly get established on Saba because they are brought over in building supplies and things like that. If you come across a frog that isn't small, very, very small, um, then the best thing to do is to trap it and contact the local authorities because you do not want the Cuban tree frog to get established. Uh, Cuban tree frogs tend to be much, much larger than Johnstone's frogs, up to about four inches or about 10 centimeters and sometimes even more. Yeah, Saba has a very, very high concentrations of frogs on this island, which is good because it's probably one reason why you don't have a lot of mosquitoes. The frogs control the mosquitoes simply because they are active at the same time of the day that the mosquitoes are. And anything that gets close to them, they're gonna pounce upon. You know, it's very difficult to say how these frogs reached here. It's entirely possible that they were transported by the Indians as they moved from islands to islands because they're very, very small and they can hide in very small crevices. But there were many frogs that uh, have been spread throughout the islands by trade. For instance, Johnstone's frogs, which we find here, the tree frog, is commonly found on islands that the British traded through. There's another frog that's very, very closely related, Martini census, which was believed to have originated on Martinique, which are French islands, and, and Martini census is found wherever the French colonies were. So you have two different, very close related species that sound almost identical, look almost identical, but where they're found, currently distributed depended upon if they are French colonies or English colonies. Mm -hmm.